so the host will seat them or you will seat them if uh, they're not there. So four menus. As you're dropping your menu, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, hi, my name is Ramon, I'll be your server today. Uh, soup of the day, we have vitamin splash. And we have a $5 special on brown powder. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, and they'll go water. So, if you guys remember during training, you wanna kinda of like give them one vibro for them, and then these fill up three. So since it's four, I brought an extra. So we're gonna go ahead and start them up. Can I get us anything uh, to drink besides water? Um, I will do a skinny margarita, please. Would you like salt margarita? Yes, please. Perfect. For you, ma'am? And then I think I'll do a bottle of that raw bar, please. I notice that he's doing ladies first. Also, when you drop water to the table, for me, I like just to open it slightly, like so, because a lot of the, the amount of people, old people would be like, how do you open mm -hmm. this? Yeah. So <laughs> it's just, <broken. laughs> just doing that little bit, and all they have to do is just take yeah. it off. <laughs> Simple. Thank you, sir. Call the tower station, please. Naturally. <laughs> and are we all on the same member number two? Um, yes, I will pay for everybody today. Thanks, mom. <laughs> 1019. And lost it. Edwards. 1019 Edwards. Okay, perfect. I'll grab you. Margarita with salt, bottle of Rombauer, tower station, and okay with fire. Anything else I need to choose? I think I'll okay, perfect. I'll be right back. And pause. Perfect. So he waited. Yes, I said my num member number, but you need that member number and last name. So some members will say their last name and member number. Others will just say their number. So in that case, he asked me, and your last name? Very, very important. I can't stress that enough with how many different members that we have. We have a Stern and a Sterns, and they get mixed up all the time. And the amount of angry emails I've gotten from Mr. Stern. Granted, yeah, it is frustrating when it happens five times. It's gonna get frustrating. It's also like a P. Durson and a P. Turson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and there's Smart three things, different Smart Smiths, yes. yeah. all this stuff. So just name and number, can't stress that enough. So, how do you think he did? How do we all think he did? Did he do anything wrong? Did he do all the steps properly? I will say, just to point out, it is a really weird table placement, so it's hard to, you know, serve uh, drinks from the right or serve uh, food from the left and pick up from the right. It's not always gonna work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so like there he said, excuse my reach, because he had to reach across me. He had no way of getting around here. So small things like that are, are gonna go a long way, especially for members who are members at other clubs that may be even more posh, so to speak. Uh, they're, they're really gonna look for things like that. Yeah. Absolutely. The open hand gestures. Mm -hmm. Always, Make always open hand gestures. I'd also like to point out that he repeated the drinks, uh, not only because he didn't write them down, but also just to make <laughs> sure he got everything right. Yes. Questions? Everything makes sense? Do you have to write everything down? I would. Uh, yeah, I was going to say I would prefer that, um, especially in the beginning. And sometimes you... Three. And then it starts with C3. So she ordered margarita. I got a liquor, crab cocktail, uh, 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 skinny margarita with salt. And then C2, got a bottle of Rombauer, got a wine, white bottle, Chardonnay, Rombauer.
the upper looks much I do have a little trick for when I test it, is once I fill it with water, um, I'll take a Vivro, and I'll put the Vivro in to test if the, you know, if there's too much ice or not enough ice, if it's swishing around on the side, I need more ice, if it's not going through, I have too much ice, so you can always use that as a tester until you get the hang of it. That's pretty good right there. You don't want too much, right, ice, or too, you don't want it too watery. So I'm gonna get my bottle of Rombauer for now. Usually the bartender will just get that ready for you. Thanks, Angela. <laughs> yeah, baby. So I'll kind of just like set my stuff here, right? Because I still need to grab that margarita glass. And I actually forgot my linen, so let me just get that. Facing the member. Okay. Yeah, the bottle of Rombauer. Looks good, thank you. Perfect. And then obviously your little uncork it, which we'll teach you. We'll give it a little taste. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't like this isn't so like she's like, oh I don't like it, give me another bottle. This is just so she can see if it's corked or not. So I opened it, so she's gonna drink. Yes, yes, it is good. Perfect. Thank so you. she tried a little bit. I'm going to give her a little more. Twist at the end. Then I'm going to put the bottle back in here. And then this bucket has these little, little hangy thingies. So you can put the rag in there or the linen, or you can just kind of like set it over. That way it's easier for her. She can grab it. And then when she serves this up some more wine or when you're refilling her, um, you can wipe it down. That way you don't get drops on the table. Um, also, while we're serving, it's really nice for all of you to top off water on people as well. So, kind of about to this level or lower. I would say, like, here is a good way to kind of go and like top people's water off around the table as you're talking to them or have questions. It's just also a nice little touch to be like, oh, I don't even need to pour my own water. Um, Big thing though, as you see the Vivro's getting low, please replace it and just do a new one. It's like my biggest pet peeve when people will water a table and then put the Vivro that they watered with and there's only this much water left. I can't, I can't do it. So please. So if I'm not super busy, like I'm just gonna go get a new one. Exactly, exactly. You can also take that um, as an advantage um, you know, if I want to check on my table, I'm like almost annoying as a server. I am like so attentive that it could be a little too much. Um, so if I need an excuse to go check up on my table, water. Perfect excuse. Absolutely. You can just nonchalantly start pouring and then slowly slip in your question. Or if they notice you, they'll probably start talking to you yeah. as well. And like a good, well, what kind of excuse, Angela? Um, you know, if I've asked them a couple of times if they're ready to order and they're not, and I you know, I'm like, ah, I don't want to bother them again, but you know, it's been like 15 minutes, they still haven't ordered. Go water them. Everything doing great. Do you have any questions on the menu where we happen to be ready to order? Sometimes you kind of need that excuse to go mm -hmm. up to your table. Absolutely. And I will be frank, I will use you guys, like your table's just getting food to go, sometimes touch a table when I know I'm gonna get stuck and I'm just, that's gonna politely excuse myself. That's always a good way to excuse yourself from a table when you really need to go do something else. I, I want to let you enjoy it. I don't want your food to get cold. I'll come back later or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's always a good one. Cool. So now they have their drinks. I'm going to ask them if they want to order any appetizers or if they're ready to order entrees. So, all right. Uh, do we want to order any appetizers or will we ready for entrees? I think we will order an appetizer, but we're also ready for our entrees. Okay. okay. I think we're going to start with the edamame bowl for the table. And then I'm gonna do the FH Cobb, but I don't want chicken pressed. I want salmon instead, medium rare. 
no blue cheese, no bacon, no dried corn. I want tortilla strips, and then I don't want the Chipotle ranch. What are your dressings? Um, so I recommend like a ranch or we can do a honey mustard, maybe like a Thousand Island if you want, something that fits more with the pecan. Let's do oil vinegar. <laughs> Sometimes when I get that question, I will go to other dressings on the menu. I'll be like, oh, well, our, um, our other salad has this really delicious green goddess dressing that I love. I can get it on the side for yeah. you. If you're ever, like, blanking or having a brain fart, it happens. I have. That is a perfect way to be like, oh, this dressing's actually really, really good. It's it would... on this other salad. Exactly. Yeah. Um, can I do the LVLTA, please? Yeah. Thank you. What would you love for your side? What other side? We have french fries, sweet potato fries, coleslaw, cup of soup, cottage cheese, uh, bowl of fruit. Do you have any names? We do. We just slide up charge. That's okay. I'll do that. <laughs> this is real. I promise. This oh, is yeah. real. This is oh, not just, yeah. just trying to be funny. <laughs> this is real. I it's promise. It's funny though, too. Because <laughs> yes, because it is real. Because <laughs> that's why it's funny. Can I get the double double cheeseburger? Um, what is any cheese? It's just sauce. It's kind of like a Moroccan seasoned uh, Thousand Island. It's very tasty. Very tasty. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, do you have gluten free cheeseburgers? Like hamburger buns? We have gluten free buns here. Yeah. Perfect. And what kind of cheese would you like? Mm, pepper Jack. Pepper Jack? Okay. And how would you like that cooked? <laughs> Medium. Yeah. Medium? That's good. <laughs> Perfect. And what would you like for your Burger. side? Huh? Oh, Same geez. thing. You can do French fries, sweet potato fries, cup of soup, bowls, oh. cup of soup, <laughs> <laughs> cup of fruit, whole slot cottage cheese, onion huh? rings, um, side salad. Can I have sweet potato fries? Yeah. With side ranch. Okay. Anything else? No. Exactly. And for you, sir. Um, I'll do the rosemary infused griddle ham and cheese. Please. <laughs> so the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make sure you got it. Normally you don't make fun of the members at the table. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. don't laugh at them. Yeah. We're do so on that. <laughs> I'm going to mute this whole video. Um, <laughs> what would you like for your side? Uh, I would like the onion rings, onion. please. It's good banter. Educational banter. Yeah. Anything else? Um, no. Alright, sweet. Go ahead and get this quick going. Be right back. Thank you. Uh, would you like something else to drink? I'm okay, okay for right now. Thank good. you. Perfect. How's your tower station, sir? I'm would you like another one? Another one? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect for you. Yeah, drink your wine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> drink your wine. <laughs> How's that wrong? Uh, so yummy. Super yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Super butter. Super yummy. Yeah, super, super fun. fun. <laughs> super super at the moment? I think we are just dandy waiting on that edamame. Perfect, I'll go check on your food. Thank you. Yeah, it might be a little busy, but it's not, it's a slower start than you think. It's not zero to 100 right out the gate. Once Memorial Day hits, then it's zero to 100, but we have almost a month to kind of get acclimated before that really does happen. Mm -hmm. cool. All right, so I dropped our edamame. I was gonna kind of put it in the middle and like maybe take this out because um, I mean I guess you need it. Yeah. But we put ketchup and stuff. Um, you can always offer to move stuff around yeah. the tables. Would you like me to take this away for more room? Would you like me to put this over here? That's totally fine. Yeah. So then, but I saw her like move this out of the way, like this way. So I was like, oh, maybe she just wants it right there. So then that's why I put it there. Use your best judgment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I dropped the edamame. Let that sit for a little bit. That's really and then I'll go check with the expo or they'll buzz me, right? I'll have a buzzer. And once, once they buzz me, food's gonna be ready, so. Yeah, we'll do that. Perfect. So time lapse, right? All right, the, done with their edamame. Can I take this out of the way? Yes, thank you. Miranda just brought up a really good point. Um, has Herman used my name yet? Yeah. 
<laughs> time to meet and go over the menu. Like Angela was saying, all the little questions we need to ask, I'll try to notate that in the descriptions as well with the list of dressings, cheese, sides, so you guys can just have everything to study at once as well. I can make like a Word doc and we can send it out to everyone. Oh. Uh, just to note, these burger boards, they can be kind of hard to pick up and set down. Yeah. Sometimes it is really difficult to, you know, open gesture, grab them because there's no lip. lip and you're gonna have to like use two hands for them. But just a note, like it's you'll run into that issue. Mm -hmm. Got your ham and cheese here, sir. Everything How's good? everything look? All good. Fantastic. Can you get us anything else at the moment? Um, I think I still have blue cheese on my salad. I do see that. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry. Let me go ahead and fix that for you. Thank you. Perfect. Get the side of the way. Someone's gonna get by. <laughs> <laughs> He gets his tower station over here. Get that one out of the way. And then everything else looks good. She has wine. Her margarita's pretty full still, so I'll just leave that there. Uh, and then I'll go check on my other tables, you know, do whatever I have to do. And then it's two minutes, right? Two minute, two bite check is when you want to come back and make sure everything's good because if maybe her burger's too rare, then you make sure you want to make sure you catch that right like in two minutes and not like when Ten everyone minutes. else is done. That way she can get something else, make sure everything's good to go, right? So I'm gonna go check on my other tables. And then typically for lunch, I think two minutes two by check is when we drop the checks, correct? Because it's fast paced. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I would just say at lunch, and I don't know if everybody always does that, but a complaint we had for years was, is, you know, at lunch, it's quicker service, is that they couldn't get their, you know, they're waiting on the check. So mm -hmm. either have it with you at all times, or you present it as early as you can, mm -hmm. so they're not looking for you to get the check, right? Because they can't really leave, or, or they, if they're trying to leave, they sign for me. But the, the, only, the only other thing that, that I noticed, and, and he probably was doing it, and I'm sure you guys have talked about it, you know, before you, after you drop off the food, do you ever do the survey at the table, right? You ask them if they have everything, which is great, but a lot of times they don't know what they need. And sometimes it's like looking, do you want another iced tea or do you have ketchup or whatever they need to do an assessment of the table before you walk away to, to ask them the questions to make sure they do have everything you need to save time, right? Because you don't, right? You're running the table, don't let them run you, yes. right? Otherwise, oh, you know what? I don't have a fork. Oh, you know what? I don't have a spoon. And then you're just like, they're, they're working you. Don't let them work you. You work them. Mm -hmm. So like a good time would have been she ordered a burger. You could preset the table with a steak knife. Get ahead of the game. Instead of serving it, then needing to go grab a steak knife which usually your expo might have already put one out for you, but I just like to get ahead of the game, you know, remove that butter knife that they're not gonna need, um, and then put a steak knife down. Cool, so two minutes have passed, two bites have passed. Uh, I'm gonna come here and make sure everything's okay. How's, is everything tasting delicious? Everything delicious. is wonderful. Right, I don't wanna say, is everything okay, right? Because it's not we're okay, better it's than delicious. Okay. Uh, so everything is wonderful, perfect. Uh, here's this for you, Mrs. Edwards, whenever you're ready, no rush. Uh, it was a pleasure being your server. We'll look forward to next time. Have a good rest of your day. Voila, beautiful. Give a round of okay, so this is going to be our outside tea station, and the reason why we do this is for convenience purposes. When we get extremely busy, it is a lot easier to just run right over here to get your quick Arnold Palmer or iced tea or water Vivero. So that's how we have this set up. So what we're gonna have in here, this is gonna be our ice bucket and we're gonna have a scoop that's always gonna be outside for safety code purposes. One of these is going to be filled with lemonade and the other one is going to be filled with our black tea. 
And then we are going to have lemons in this bucket and we will have a little scoop for that as well because we're not gonna pick them up with our fingers. We're gonna have extra sugar caddies here, although they should be on the tables. We're always gonna grab some extras just in case. And then we're gonna have a handful of glassware set up, which you would get from the kitchen. And then in this bucket, we are going to have ice as well. And this is going to be filled with our water viveros for the same conveniency purposes. Let's say a table gets sat down all the way at 65, we can easily just grab a water vivero. Or if you notice 63 needs a refill, we can just easily grab one. This is something that we're gonna completely refill in the morning, but then also continuously fill throughout our shift. And then these you are going to grab from our catering closet. And then these buckets are going to be located in our whole storage. And down here we will store a couple of trays and linens as well for you to grab. And then I'll go ahead and take you into our whole storage. <laughs> yeah, baby. So we are in the midst of reorganizing, but this is where you are going to find all of our outside um, placemats. The outside ones are always going to be here and the inside ones will always be in the inside so we won't get mixed up. We're always going to have some extra towels out here just in case people spill. And then down here, this is where we are going to store all of our condiment caddies, salt and pepper shakers that are going to be outside. So this hole is used for different purposes. We'll use this for bars, for big events, for cool downs, but luckily we have some space to store outside stuff. This is where we are going to use our heaters. So you can see here we have a nice little timer here and then you can put it all the way up to 90 or just down to 10 and this is how we're going to turn them off. Uh, um, almost every morning I like to turn these on to about 30 for about 60 minutes just to heat up the patio. It's very chilly in the morning so I just like to do this for the member purpose and also if they request to have the heaters on now you know where to find them. And these heaters are only going to work for our 60s out on the patio and then we have different heaters that are for our 70s which are going to be near our whole one cafe. 70s. And these are our 60s. 60s. So table 60 right here, we did just do a little lunch service mock setup. So this is going to be exactly what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to have our four placemats. We're going to have our water glasses, our B&B &B plates, and our roll-ups. If you look right here, this is going to be a perfect setup. We're going to have our caddy on the right, our sugar caddy in the center, and our salt and peppers. A good way to always look when you're setting it up is to be facing the light. We like to have a rule where our white is always facing the light. So my sugar caddy is facing this way. And then we are always going to have our salt pepper also facing the light as well. And you can use this little circle in the middle to kind of line everything up. So this is going to be a perfect setup for you. So just an example, this is table 60. This is going to be seat one because I am facing the north and directly to my right, seat one seat two, seat three, and seat four. Beautiful. All right, I'm just gonna talk about a few events that we do here as dinner servers. Uh, so cool downs, probably like one of our biggest weekly events, uh, which will start after Memorial Day. Um, it's gonna be every Friday. And what we do is we still have regular dinner service in the dining room and the dining patio, uh, but everything from here this way is gonna be cool down. So essentially it's like a big party where members will come, uh, have a lot of drinks. We have a buffet style set up uh, over here in the lawn. And yeah, it's pretty much like a big party. Um, people will come in, get their drinks, get their food, um, socialize, network. And if they always wanna come in for dinner after that, uh, they can do that as long as they check in with the host to make sure that we have uh, enough space for them. A lot of people will try and seat themselves, so it's our job to make sure we deter them to the host stand. And a lot of you will be working the cool downs as well because we use lunch servers for that day to name take and cocktail serve and stuff like that. And we'll have all of our bartenders working those cool downs. So we'll have this main bar, we'll have a bar outside, and the hole. Um, and the hole, the hole will that will transform into our bar so that's where we get our drinks instead of here for cool down just to keep everything on this side over here um, so then we just want to make sure that we're, we're helping the bartenders set up with everything that they need and just help them think of things that they might need right um, so as opposed to lunch service for dinner we use the whole club right so we'll use the dining room the lounge of course the 70s and the 60s as well um, another thing we do on Mondays after Memorial Day will be Monday Grill Night. 
So that's gonna be a nice setup. We, we put we essentially moved the whole kitchen out into the lawn over here. And that just gives members the opportunity to uh, interact with the chefs, with the people who make their food every day. Uh, and it's just a little more fun, a little more casual. Um, we'll have uh, proteins, grilled veggies, baked potatoes, salads. And we also do uh, a nice Sunday bar over here in the bowl for all the kiddos. So a whole bunch of ice cream, mm -hmm. all right, Joe. Um, <laughs> it's a nice way to end our week with something that's a little casual and a little less busy and just kind of end the week like, ugh. And that's our only menu for the evening as well. We will not do our a la carte menu. Uh, another thing to expect with dinner service, it's just, it's gonna be a little longer, right? People wanna come in, have a good time, um, relax, so then it's not as fast paced as lunch. Uh, we're, we're gonna have one, two, three courses. Uh, you're probably gonna open a bottle of wine every night. So it's just, it's just gonna take a little longer. You're not gonna do as many tables, but it'll, you're gonna spend more time per table. We'll sit with those nights too, like specifically the grill night and the cool down. Regardless if the hours are any longer, they're gonna seem a little longer because the grill night we're moving, like you said, the whole kitchen's out there. It's grills, it's flat tops, it's tables, oyster setups, things like that. Uh, for the cool down, it's like a whole remote bar out there, right? That isn't just coming from here. So just expect that for those nights, lunch or dinner, you're gonna, you're gonna feel it. And finally, um, Thursdays we like to do a wine dinner every month uh, so that will be 50 people first come first serve you have to sign up uh, in advance and we'll have um, a winery come and uh, we'll do like cocktail hour here they'll do like a Chardonnay Pinot Noir we'll uh, pass out appetizers and then we'll all move into the dining room and we'll do like a four or five course meal for them with each course, we're pouring a different uh, bottle of wine. So that's just like something that's super fun to do. Uh, and then you get to try some of the wine at the end sometimes, usually, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Anything else? Thursdays. Oh, Thursdays, Thursdays, Thursdays yeah. right. On Thursdays, every Thursday after Memorial Day, uh, like everything else, uh, we do Thirsty Thursdays. So that means we have a, a, a wine vendor come and they'll, you can sample uh, any types of wines. They'll bring Chardonnays, Pinots, Cabernets. Uh, we'll have a big charcuterie board out there. Uh, and if they stay for dinner, then you get, they get 50% off uh, a bottle of wine. That's $100 less. And then 40% off, it's between 100 and 200. And then anything above 200 is uh, manager's discretion. And that just helps incentivize people to come here uh, because the Meadow does get super busy on Thursdays, so we want to make sure that we get as many people here on Thursdays as well. They do burger night on Thursdays, that's why, and that's one of their popular nights. Burger night is popping, mm -hmm. for sure. It's a good time. Okay. Any questions? Cool. We'll move into opening procedures, so let's go over to the kitchen. <laughs> Obviously, the first thing you want to do is brew coffee. A little different for dinner, uh, since we do go all the way to like 8.30, 9-ish, 8.30. Um, we want to make sure that the coffee stays hot, so um, not a lot of people are going to order coffee at 5 or 6. So I think 5.30 is like a, usually a good time uh, to brew coffee. Uh, but uh, most importantly, the first thing you want to do is set up the patio uh, for dinner service. And I'll just touch on that. So anything on the lunch side, so 70s and the lounge, uh, we're gonna set up for roll up with roll-ups for dinner. And then anything on this side, so 60s and the dining room, gets full dinner setups, which we'll go over as well towards the end. Um, so and is that the same for cool downs yeah. in the lounge? Okay, yeah. I just wanna make sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then just important as well, we wanna make sure that we're helping lunch close because we're gonna come in at three or four um, and then that's when lunch is closing. So the sooner we help them and get them home, the sooner they're out of the way and then we can kind of do like side stuff that, that we need to finish like setting up wine stations and all that, right? Uh, cool, so opening duties will look like this. They'll be posted up here on this bulletin board. There's lunch and dinner. 
there. It's different. Uh, and then what I usually do when I come in every day is I'll assign captains. So two people, two people per section. And then that just means you guys are responsible for getting all that done. Obviously, we will help each other, but that's, that's going to be your focus, right? As long as everyone does their little section, we should be good to go. Versus lunch, it's everyone doing everything. You're not really assigned. Everyone's responsible for those opening closing duties. And like Herman said, for dinner, it'll be uh, delegated a little bit more. Cool. So I'm just going to run through this real quick. Brew coffee and iced tea. Um, we will dump the iced tea and coffee right for lunch, and we'll just brew it fresh around 5.30. Uh, we fill ice bin over here in the well, make sure that's stocked, and make sure that the bartenders uh, are stocked at home ice as well. Uh, we stock doily plates, which are going to be up here for the expo or over here in the soup station. Uh, usually expo will focus on this, but we want to make sure that it gets done right, uh, just in case we forget to do it. Uh, we have the doily plates that we need for any sides that we're bringing out for tea service, coffee service, and all that. Uh, we're going to refill our spray bottles, right, which uh, lunch servers, uh, it's their responsibility as well when they come in. So we just want to double check, make sure all the spray bottles are full that the rags are the fresh rags for the service. All right, we're gonna polish any silverware or glassware. So that's also helping lunch servers because that's their closing duty. So when we come in, we wanna make sure that we help them out as well. Uh, the glass, glassware, silverware, um, and then the glassware, remember it's gonna be over here in this little area right here. Yeah. Replenish any dinner folds and roll-ups. Again, roll-ups, lunch servers are gonna do that for their closing duties, so make sure we help them with that. Uh, and then if we don't remember how to do that, just ask, or we'll go over it. Uh, and then dinner folds, is mostly gonna be dinner service responsibility. Um, so make sure that the dinner service station is stocked up all the way, usually within like, I don't know, 100, 150 dinner folds. <laughs> so you'll get good at that. Cool, next section, check with hostess to set tables for reservations. That's super important as well uh, for lunch servers and for dinner servers. So lunch servers, um, at the end of your shift, closing duty is to reset um, the 70s and the lounge for dinner service. So you wanna make sure you check to see how many people we have at the table, and then you'll set that for the appropriate amount of people. For example, 70, we have it set for a six stop usually. For lunch, it stays that way usually. Um, but if we have a neat top reservation for dinner service, we want to make sure that we have two extra chairs and two extra, uh, extra place settings, and we swap the condiment caddies out for lanterns and take the sugar caddies off as well. Right? All right, set 50s and 60s for dinner. Uh, so 60s obviously are going to be set up for lunch service with roll ups, uh, but for dinner service, we're going to go ahead and do the whole two knives two forks, b and plate, b, &B knife, water glass, and no wine glasses outside, but we do need wine glasses inside for the deck, right? All right, check all tables for cleanliness and complete settings, so that's just double checking, make sure that every table is set up for the appropriate amount of people for the reservations, and make sure that everything is kind of wiped off, the chairs, the poor people touch and all that, make sure everything's all clean. Fill and sanitize salt and pepper shakers, um, so that's just something that you might not have to do every day, but just double check, right? And then if something needs to be filled up, then yeah, you can ask the hands to find salt, pepper, just make sure. Especially for dinner, because the salt and pepper shakers are clear, so you're definitely going to be able to see the levels versus yeah. lunch. You're going to kind of have to feel it or open it up and see the levels. Yeah, we want it to look full. Right? Build wine stations and dining room, so we'll go over that as well. But we have a big wine station in here where we have all of our wines by the glass that are under $15. And that way, whenever you ring that in, it won't send to the bartender. It's kind of like an iced tea where it just doesn't go anywhere, but you have to pour it yourself, right? So we have wine glasses, we have the bottles, pour it, we have extra serviettes, decanters, aerators, anything. Okay, next section, sweep and hokey. That's Chandler's favorite thing to do. So I always usually always put them in there. Um, but sweep everything. Lunch gets pretty hectic, so we want to make sure that we hook you on the floors and that we sweep outside, make sure everything looks good for dinner. Hokey is just like a vacuum thing that we use. It doesn't make any sound. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but 
That's what it's called. Uh, again, uh, check with hostess to set tables for reservations. That is super important, so it's on two of these sections, so communication. Uh, set the lunch for dinner. Uh, check, fill check presenters and pencil cups. So we want to make sure that those are all stocked up. So we're not like scrambling uh, for comic cards or pencils when we're dropping checks, right? All right, wipe down all trays. That's also going to be something that lunch service do for closing duty, but you know, if you help them out, then that just knocks that off the worst one, right? So you want to make sure that you wipe it, spray it sandy and wipe it down. If it's super dirty, we can run it through a dish. Next section, sanitize all tables and chairs. Again, especially like through COVID, we're like super uh, concerned with all that. So we want to make sure that everything is wiped down. Um, set 70s with roll-ups. So again, 70s on this side, roll-ups just like a bunch of settings, except no sugar, no corner the caddies, no sugar caddies, just a lantern and salt and pepper. All right, we're gonna check that all chairs have clean seat cushions. That's also uh, something that a lot of people overlook when they're busing. Uh, usually I'll come in and check the patio and all these seat cushions have like crumbs and chocolate sauce and stuff. So you want to make sure that all that's wiped down. If you want to take the seat cushions off and like bang it or like wipe it down with the rag to make sure everything looks nice. Um, <clears throat> check the boardroom. Again, just communicate with uh, the lunch servers. If they already did it, then you can cross that off. Uh, but that's also a super important one. We want to make sure that that's clean for any meetings in the morning, right? Uh, and then build one station outside. Just like the one in the dining room, we will have one outside with the same things. So all of our, our reds by the glass, our whites by the glass are going to be in ice. We have uh, Bordeaux, burgundy glasses, and decanters, and aerators, and a whole bunch of serviettes. Uh, and this inside one, we do have big XL glasses for like expensive Cabernets, and the outside wine station we won't do that, just because those are like super expensive and fragile. Um, so if you need to grab any of those, we can just go to the bar if you have any tables outside. There we go. Alright, we jump into closing duties. So boom, end of the night, you're all done, your tables are all done. Um, we're, you're going to come in and uh, check your closing duties. Sometimes I'll switch it up so you won't do like same thing that you do for opening duty, so just make sure you check uh, where I put you. So clean, thoroughly clean the iced tea and coffee machines, right? We're going to dump all that, like I showed you, we're going to rinse it, we're going to take the nozzles off, we're going to scrub it, and we're going to put the nozzles for the iced teas and the coffee urns, and we're going to soak them in white wine vinegar and water, right? Hot water. Hot water. Well, we're going to break down the soda machine, so for lunch servers, they just keep it because we need it for, for dinner. Uh, but for us, at the end of the night, we'll break that down. Uh, and then, again, we'll put those little nozzles in hot water and wipe them. Cool. We're going to wipe down all countertops and underneath machines, like these computers. We're going to wipe down this, computers, a little bit everywhere, right? Uh, make sure everything looks clean. Dump all the little trash can bins. Those little trash bins, we're going to dump all that. Make sure everything looks ready to go for lunch they'll do the same for dinner service. Uh, restock coffee and tea packets, which remember uh, coffee and tea over here. And then if we need to grab any extra, usually we have boxes down there of extra, but if we don't have anything there, it'll be in dry storage. Right? Cool. Uh, polish any silver or glassware. Um, obviously, if you see anything like that, we see a green, a green bucket thing there, you're just gonna, and you have extra time, just go ahead and polish it real quick. Right? And that means we can go home. Uh, completely restock, restock napkins, so artichokes, dinner folds, and roll-ups. Usually at the end of the night, we'll go either to the club room, uh, but if the club room's busy, we'll go downstairs where we eat uh, for lunch, and we'll just do that there. So roll-ups, we need to fill up two big uh, wooden crates for roll-ups, and then we need to make sure that we're stocked up on dinner folds here. And you can also grab like all this silverware and take it to the club room and take it downstairs, and then just polish all that as well. So usually we'll all focus on that at the end of the night, and then we'll kind of go and break off and, and make sure that our individual sections are all finished as well. All right, next section, check all tab tables for cleanliness and complete settings. So then that's your job to make sure that everything is wiped down and that the dinner is set by complete, complete settings. 
dinner, uh, dining room, and then for the lounge, obviously we set it with roll-ups for lunch for the next day. And then anything outside is just bad. We just wipe down the tables and then leave them. Because then lunch servers come in in the morning and set it. Right? They wipe it and they set it. Here we go. Fill and sanitize salt and pepper. Again, that's just where you're double checking. Make sure everything's clean. No chicken grease on the salt and pepper. And make sure everything's full. Pokey the dining room and lounge again because we will and hectic gender. Uh, check for glassware, silverware, by bocce ball courts and fire pits. So bocce ball over here on this side of the dining room, a lot of people like to hang out over there after their meal and they'll, they'll bring their wine glass or their cocktail glass and they'll just kind of leave it there and leave. And then same thing with the fire pits and the big wooden hand round chairs, the white and green chairs, they'll leave glasses there with your bottles and napkins. So we want to make sure that all of that is up clean for our lunch service in the morning. Cool, next section, sanitize, take out trash at all computer stations. Again, I touched on that. We have these little bins at the POS systems uh, where you can throw away like old chits or stuff when you're in a rush. We'll make sure we empty all that. Uh, for the lunch servers in the morning, check the boardroom again, make sure everything is stocked. Uh, sodas, bibros, plastic cups, uh, water glasses, uh, any espresso pods that they may need. Uh, Fill the check presenters and pencil cups again. We have a whole bunch of common cards, stacks of common cards at each POS uh, station where we we'll use to like, fill up the check presenters, make sure there's a little golf pencil in there. If we don't have those, make sure there's a pen in there, all ready to go. Wipe down the trays again, they get pretty nasty during service. So wipe the big trays, wipe the little trays, make sure everything's clean. Next section, sanitize all tables and chairs. Again, big emphasis on wiping everything down, right? Chicken grease. Uh, check out all chairs and have clean seat cushions again, just like I mentioned with the outside. A lot of the dining room chairs will have a whole bunch of crumbs and stuff, and sometimes before busting, we just forget to wipe down the chairs. But then, like, we don't want to remember pulling the chair out and you see it's all crummy, and then they do this. Ah, that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. If you ever see that happen, yes, <laughs> yes. All right, uh, we're gonna turn off the heaters. I'll show you uh, where the heaters are. We have the patio heaters, and then we have the hole-in-one patio over here, and they have a whole bunch of heaters there as well, and those buttons are going to be in that hole-in-one patio. And I'll show you where to do that. And they're really sweet the entire patio. That takes a while, but super important. We don't want raccoons to come and like, do that job for us. <laughs> make sure that we uh, sweep all that, make sure, it look, make sure it looks nice for lunch servers in the morning, and then break down both wine stations. So, everything inside, everything outside, put the uh, red bottles back here in the red wine uh, wall and then all the white wine bottles we'll take back to the bar and then they'll put them in that little cooler, right? Um, and then decanters will go back to the bar or to this inside uh, wine station. When closing as well is like when you check the POS systems, um, whatever server station you're in, you know, whether it's like you're just, you know, it's your job to do uh, the check presenters or make sure everything's in there, make sure there's golf pencils as well. Um, I like to keep an extra roll of the receipt paper by there as well um, because, like, you know, we will be, you know, splitting a bunch of chits. We use a bunch of that receipt paper. It can go in, like, one day and half a day. Um, you can find an extra receipt paper. Um, sometimes we keep it in uh, this little area by the expo. If you don't find it there, it's going to be in dry storage. If you don't find it there, it's going to be in the uh, dry storage bleaker box that's outside. Um, but I always like to keep one at every station when you put that one in there to replace it. So just make sure you, you know. So if it ever runs out, out, like in the middle of service, then you always have that backup to put it there. And then, yeah, and those, right? They usually live in that cubby right there. It's you just need to order a whole bunch. We don't have any right now, but this is where it will be. We'll know when it's off as well because it'll start printing either green or red stripes. And that just looks bad to present that to a member. So once you start to see like that pigment, that's when you know to touch on these buzzers since we have a little buzzer thing right here. Uh, so this is what your buzzer is going to look like. It has a little clip uh, that you put on your server apron or your belt and whenever the expo needs you, they'll just hit the button and it'll buzz. Bzzz. So that's like the perfect opportunity if you're stuck at a table. And bzzz, oh my, they need me in the kitchen and you can run away, right? So it's super, super helpful so you can focus on your section without coming back to the kitchen and checking like every minute. Uh, focus on your section, and then until you feel the buzz, that's when you can come back into the kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. 
Filters that we use, we don't like using the little ones because uh, everyone has seen, uh, the, the coffee grounds and the iced tea stuff like will spill out of there and make a big mess. Um, so for the tea, we got this little guy. Put your filter inside, and then this is the green pomegranate stuff. It smells super good. Opening this is a little tricky. You don't want to like yank it because then it'll blow up and go everywhere. Sometimes they have like little slits on the corner that you can just tear off. Um, but again, please make sure that you're reading what bags that you're grab it, grabbing so we don't brew the opposite yeah. thing. Or I'm going to green tea, and then the other one will say traditional black iced tea. I'll do one of each. Ooh. That's what that looks like. It smells super good, it smells. pomegranate green tea, pomegranate green tea right there, so I'm going to move that so the arrow is pointing in there, right, because if you just leave it there, then that's going to spill, so push that, keep it on full at all times, we never change the, the tea, we don't do half, we just always do full, and then brew C, for this guy, for the black tea, you're going to move it, arrow pointing in there, and then brew B, right, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, cool, that's brewing, now I'm going to do my coffee. So what does one bag make? What does what two bags make? Cool. Put the filter in. I'm just going to do a half right now so I don't waste a whole bunch. And then, obviously, for the most part, you're going to leave it on full. But if, like, we run out of regular and we need to rebrew some for, like, 7 to 8 o'clock, we don't need a full urn usually, so we'll just go half. But for the most part, just keep it on full. So I'm doing half right now, brew B in the middle, and then that'll get going. And then it tells me, now brewing, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Now brewing. Seven minutes, so that's what we're trying to So while that's brewing, you can focus on your other duties that are on the list, and then always come back, dump the the old stuff, and then rebrew the decaf, the regular, the green tea, and the black tea. Coffee. Yes. Okay. So we have two different trays set up here, and this is going to be a set example for coffee service and tea service. Um, so for coffee service, right here, we have our four staple pieces. We have our sugar caddy. Um, we have our creamer, and then we have a plate with a spoon and a doily, and then a black coffee cup with the Forest Highlands logo. There are a couple things that I want to note here. The first thing that I'm going to do when someone orders coffee before I set my tray up is I'm going to fill the cup all the way with hot water with that red spigot on that coffee machine, and I'm going to let it sit. While that's sitting and that cup is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and put my tray together. The reason why we do that is because their presentation is their reality. If that cup is coming to them hot, coffee is hot. If they feel the cup and it's cold, they are automatically gonna assume their coffee is cold. And while you're walking that tray, if your coffee is room temperature or cold, the coffee is going to get cold so fast, more fast than you think it would. And the reason why we have this plate with the doily is because when the cups are super hot, they leave rings on the wooden tables. So the way that I would present this is I would have my coffee filled in the cup and I'm going to put that plate down first and then I'm going to put the coffee cup on top of it. And the reason why I have it separate um, is because when you have it like this, it's sometimes a little awkward and not very 
it doesn't place very well. So that's why we have it separate to, you know, no spills. So that's gonna be your setup. And when we put the sugar caddy down at the table, we always like to do rule of thumb white to the light. So if you're facing the mountains, even if it's dark out, we're gonna put the sugar caddy facing north. And then here's gonna be tea set up here. So we have a couple items here. Again, we have our sugar caddy and we have two plates here with doilies on it. One is going to carry the hot water for them. Again, this gets so hot once you put hot water in it. So A, please be careful when you're grabbing it. I try to be super careful by grabbing like this. And not only is that for myself, but I'm gonna let the member know how hot this is. So again, it's gonna leave a ring on the table. So that's why we have a plate for it. And then my other plate here is going to hold this cup. So I'm gonna do the same thing with coffee service. Before I get my setup together, I'm gonna fill this all the way with hot water and I'm gonna let it sit. And then I'm gonna set up for the rest of my tray. And then when I'm ready to go, I'm gonna dump it. I'm gonna wipe it off and I'm gonna put it upside down for them. And then we have the spoon. And then we have a little ramekin here. This is my makeshift lemon. We would put a couple lemon wedges in here and a couple things of honey. And this is all automatic. So no matter what, you know, unless they say, I just want black coffee, then you wouldn't need to bring the creamer and sugar, but it's an always automatic. I'm gonna bring them all these things. Saves you time. You know, you don't have to go back and grab it. And then if they request a certain type of tea, then you would just put the tea bag on that plate for them. If they don't request a certain type of tea and it happens to skip your mind to offer them the teas we have, we have beautiful little tea boxes. So this is a great time to go ahead and present that tea box to them and you would just, you know, label it off. I have our chamomile, I have our mint. Um, it's very important to kind of become familiar with what kind of teas we have, what's decaffeinated and what's caffeinated. Um, you know, try and study it, but it will come with time and that'll, that'll be great for you. We have three to four of these boxes. They are super nice, so let's try to keep them clean. Let's keep them always filled. If you go up there, you grab a box and like this is empty and this is empty, you're not gonna bring it out like that. You're gonna fill it first and then we'll go ahead and bring it out and present to them. So the way that I would carry this, I know it kind of looks a little funky. Sometimes during dinner service, I like to even bring a full tray out based on your spacing, use your best judgment, is I carry it like this and like this. Okay, awesome. Any questions on that? All right, great. And just reminder, very hot, reminder, very hot. You know, if you would want to be reminded sitting at a table, always remind the member. Um, an extra little touch of service that I always like to do is these tea bags are really expensive and really high quality. So I like to let them know how long to steep it for. Most tea bags are usually about three minutes. The traditional tea we get at Target and such, these tea bags are at least five minutes. Um, you know, it makes it stronger for them. So I just like to let them know. Um, by the way, go ahead and steep your tea bag for five minutes. If I have that much time on my hands, I might even set a timer and go back in five minutes. You know, hi, Mrs. Smith, your tea bag's probably ready now. You know, just elevate that service. Just a couple of things that you can do. Music to my ears. Uh, these are our serviettes, polishing rags. If for some reason you see like an old like lipstick stain or like a footprint uh, that didn't come out when they washed it, uh, we don't want to give that to the members, right? They don't want to wipe their face with the footprint. Uh, so we'll just put it up on here because we don't get credit for dirty stuff, so we'll just use it. It's still clean, so we'll use it to polish silverware. Uh, and then obviously, if it's clean, you're, you're, good, go. you're good to use it for rollers and all that. Yep. This is our dining room wine station, so uh, we're going to have all of our reds that are by the glass that are under 15. Anything that's over that, like silver oak or Austin Hope, uh, we'll send to the bar when you ring it in, and the bartender will fill that up for you. And then all the white wines, we use this nice little Forest Highlands uh, bucket. We put all them in ice to so stay nice and cold, right? And then all these as well are under 15. I think Ron Bauer. Oh, yeah, it's is, just Ron Bauer. Yeah, Ron Bauer is the only one that we don't put in here because it's like 22. Um, but we have our different wine glasses. So XLs uh, are going to be for like anything super expensive, right? Or if you're gonna set a table and someone brings in their own bottle that's really nice, then go ahead and just, if they request it, or if you know the bottle's super expensive, uh, just go ahead and swap their glasses. They're already preset, right? So every table in the, in the dining room is gonna be set uh, with their wine glasses, but you can go ahead and swap them out for these. And if they bring like a Pinot, right? Um, you'll use the uh, Burgundy glasses or the Pinot Noir glasses right here. They're like a little more bulbous at the bottom and then these are just another version of your regular Bordeaux glasses uh, which is what we use to set up uh, the tables these are just like a, a, a little more like fancy version they're Rydell glasses and then the <coughs> canters 
Uh, we're gonna try to decant every bottle that people bring, or if someone requests a bottle, they, they order one. We're gonna try to decant it just because it's like a completely different wine once it opens mm -hmm. up and you aerate it. Uh, we, so we have these nice little Forest Highlands decanters, which members are allowed to purchase if they want. And we only decant red wine, just we don't need to decant white wine, just so yeah. everyone's aware. Never decant white. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you're decanting, these are the little aerators. They're super cool because they have like the little filter. Uh, so that'll catch any sediment, especially if you have an older bottle. Uh, it's going to have a lot of sediment at the bottom, so that'll catch that. And then the wine pours out of these little holes and it's a nice little presentation. Like it'll just like, like spray and it looks really cool. Uh, so then we'll go over this in wine service training the yeah. next two days as well and more in depth. Uh, something that's super important. These are carafes, which we'll use to refill wine. So you brought them a glass of wine already and they want another one. You're not gonna bring them another glass and swap. You're just gonna fill this guy up with the wine and then go ahead and put it to the table and then pour it in your glass that you already have. Uh, we do have two different types. So this one's like a little fatter. This one's a little skinnier. And <coughs> super important to see the skinny one, we fill up to the neck. Uh, but this one, it is a little fatter, so like this one. So if I fill it up with the same amount that I have in this guy, it only goes up to there. So just be aware of the different ones. If you're filling up this guy, fill it up to a little bit below the neck. And then this one, you can go ahead and fill up to the neck. I uh, will mention you're not only using carafes for refills. Notice the tables that we have set over here, they already have wine glasses on them. So if a member orders wine for their first drink of the night, uh, say they ordered two Austin Hopes and the rest of the table got mixed drinks, you can remove those wine glasses for the mixed drinks and you can bring two Austin Hope glasses in carafes and pour them in. So it's not just set for refills, but I use those all the time. I prefer to use those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's nice going up to the table, like, do you mind if I top you off? And then you're doing it for them. So just that nice extra touch again. And we never want to leave anything dirty here because it is like, I mean, the whole point of this is obviously for efficiency, but we want it to look nice so when members walk in through there, they see it and they're like, wow, that looks cool, right? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be the case if there's just dirty carafes everywhere and dirty wine glasses, right? Uh, and then obviously we'll have some serviettes there for wine service. Um, Where do we put empty wine bottles? Empty wine bottles, uh, we do have um, we can either put it in the glass bin. I think that's usually where we'll do it. There's a glass bin in dish pit, a little uh, bus tub, and that's where we put anything glass. Anything broken, we'll sweep up, put it in there, and any bottles as well. And then we want to make sure we don't just stack. If it's full, just go ahead and dump it in the trash. Um, in the dumpster. In the dumpster. Outside, outside. not in the trash. Yeah, not in the trash. Yeah, the whole point of that is so... Uh, the dish pit when they go and dump the trash they're not getting any chance to get cut up by a bottle or any broken yeah. glass right so we just separate it it all ends up going in the same dumpster yeah if i find glass in the trash can i will take it out and be like who put this in the trash can because it's one of my biggest pet peeves no beer bottles no wine nothing broken in the trash right cool all right, let's go ahead and check out the outside. All right. Um, sorry, really quick before we get started, Chef Eddie loves stealing this cart from us um, quite often. So for whatever reason, he takes the cart. We'll just set this up with either a four foot or a six foot table, whatever we can find best. Yeah, he likes doing specials and oysters and stuff on the cart. So for whatever reason, we'll just make shift a table. And a lot of time it's good to, it's, Good to try and communicate. He's not the easiest person to communicate with, but a lot of times, you know, we'll come out here and set this beautiful wine station up, and then he comes through, ripping through, and wanting to shuck oysters there, right? And then you gotta take it all back down. So it's good to, you know, ask, even if it's myself or Herman, hey, is Eddie doing oysters tonight? And if we know, we'll let you know, and you wouldn't have to yeah. go ahead and set this up. Mm -hmm. Or set it up to Cool. Uh, so it's the same concept, right? Uh, all of our wines by the glass under 15. Uh, over here, we're actually going to have Vivros, so we'll fill that up with ice and put uh, Vivros in there. That way we don't have to walk all the way inside if we're, we have the tables out here. Uh, so serviettes on there. We have our Burgundy, our Pinot Noir glasses, uh, some crafts, some decanters, uh, regular Bordeaux glasses. And that's pretty much how it's going to look. Um, just, just it's kind of there just to make your life a little easier. Um, 
I'm gonna touch real quick on these heaters. Come on, come over here real quick. I wonder if I can fit everyone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there is a light switch back here. And then, so you push this button up until four hours, then you turn these guys on, that will turn on like that. And then move these knobs usually to like around 50 is okay. Yeah, so obviously 100's hot, 50's in the middle. And then to turn those off, you can just click that. That turns off, that turns off. You can flip those switches back if you want, but I mean, it's all gonna be off. Awesome. <coughs> so if a member asks like, hey, can you turn these heaters on? Uh, these tables for dinner service. So when you come in uh, for your shift or if you're a lunch server and you're helping dinner service close. Uh, so obviously two knives, two forks, you can be plate, you can be knife, your water glass, and then we have lanterns and then salt and pepper shakers. These are the wooden ones that we use outside. For inside, it's the same thing, except we have the clear salt and pepper shakers and we have a wine glass. Um, so that's gonna be everything from here down. Everything from 70, if you wanna take a look over here. So we have a different style of setup. So this is just our regular lunch setup. So roll up B&B plate and a water glass, and then same thing, lantern, and then the salt and pepper shakers. And then that'll be from this table all the way down, right? And then. Cool, so this is our hole-in-one uh, snack bar area. So over here, we'll have an attendant for breakfast and lunch. We'll be having a soup, breakfast burritos, sandwiches, beer, sodas. Uh, so it's kind of like a quick grab and go concept for golfers. But over here, it's the same setup. Uh, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 is everything on the 70s. And then all these guys in here are gonna be like the 12s, 15s, all the way up to 20s. So usually for dinner service uh, and for lunch if it's cold, you can just focus on these guys up here. Go up to four hours, those lights are already on, and then just turn the knobs to 50 or wherever, if they're extra cold, go to 100, I guess, I don't know. And then to turn those off, you can do that, and then just click again until the green lights are all off. Our line wall, so we have how many knives? 810? 700? Yeah, uh, 740? 740? 800. 800. <laughs> 800 bottles, right? And uh, we have Pinots, Red Blends, Zins, uh, Merlots, Cabernets. Uh, so it's going to kind of start from my body. So we have all our Pinot Noirs over here, Frank Family, Turley's Infidel, Rombauer's Infidel, uh, Ravenwood, and it kind of goes also like the more Cabernet, big, bold, you kind of- Full body. Full body, it's like more expensive typically. So if we come over here, like these are like the really nice bottles. Come on, come on, don't push up. So like a bottle of Schaefer Hillside, I think that's like I think almost 300 or 300 bucks, 320, yeah. Schaefer Hillside, uh, important thing to note, we do have I think three different types of Schaefer, so Schaefer Relentless, Schaefer Hillside, Schaefer 1.5, mm -hmm. so super important when someone orders a bottle of Schaefer, which one, right? Yeah. Same For with one. Duckhorn, um, Duck Silver Horn. Oak. We have two Silver Oaks here which are super, super popular, uh, so Silver Oak Alexander, is like 120 ish. Mm -hmm. This one's gonna be like 180, almost 200. I think it is 200 actually. Uh, but this one's by the glass, so they can order this by the glass. I think it's like 27, eight dollars. Like uh, and then this one's only by the bottle because it's more expensive. So super important again, just to confirm which type, what's the vintage. Usually, like if they'll order, like, oh, can I get a bottle of Frank Family Cabernet? and they're usually pointing at it on the wine list and I'll be like, oh, okay, the Frank Family Cabernet, and I'll look at it. And then the one they're pointing at, I'll see the vintage, uh, the vineyard, right? It's super important because you have uh, either, it's either Napa or it's more specific, it's Russian River Valley. It's or Derek. reserve versus not reserve. Right, so super important to focus on that. This one's a nice one. cool one to look at, Opus One. Yeah, who has a question? Hot how, Go often ahead. Do, how, how often do these bottles get sold, like the probably more high-end ones, would you say? Um, yeah, you can probably, mm -hmm. like, between all the servers, I don't know, maybe like six, seven bottles, like bougie bottles a night. 
And then if it's not a bougie bottle, like for sure it's going to be um, something like there as well. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah. more. We usually at least get, especially dinner here, like you're going to get like one bottle of wine that's upwards yeah. of $100 to mm -hmm. have with like their main course or, or like that. Yeah, yes. And then people do bring wine in as well so hence the member lockers not everyone has lockers here so some of them can store their own wine here some of them will bring it from home it's very important for the host to triple check as for all of you to make sure it's not on our wine list because if it's on our wine list they cannot bring that same bottle in um and then we will charge a corkage fee as well if they do bring their own bottle yes i just wanted to make a note do you see how the doors are very clear <laughs> and they are very, they don't automatically close. Um, so we have had instances where people almost run into them, especially in this store when it opens up. If you're coming around this corner, you just bang right into it. Like this is sharp, like this is sharp, like these parts. So just always be cognizant, like this one's just kind of like that, you know? Um, but we had, there was an instance one time when Mark was opening this um, and a little girl was running through. We also don't like kids run. But she banged her head on the corner, and it was like a whole thing. Um, but yeah, they're very clear. So just be cognizant. Like, you know, if you're just in a rush, you grab a model from the thing you think is automatically going to close, it doesn't. Or just, you know, if some, you hear someone walking to the, oh, like, you know, corner, like, you know, just to make sure that mm -hmm. yeah. there are no injuries when I want to be safe. So. Yes. Also, don't let it close, because then it will slam and break. That right. will be a nightmare. And then, real quick, uh, down here we also have other bottles that don't fit up here or we have extra stock in these guys and then these four right here are actually members so they didn't fit in there so they we sold these four here to members I think the names are on there Rashkins right there uh, but everything here in that way is going to be extra if you don't know where something is just ask me or Haley or Mark uh, we, I usually know what, what is down here as well just because we stock it and all that it's a little easier for us. Like when we are putting away the wine stations, um, we kind of like to keep them all right here. Um, and then when uh, we want to uh, take them back out for when we, uh, before we start dinner service to get them set up, just make sure that we are utilizing the ones that have corks in them rather than opening up a brand new one. Uh, we did run into an issue with that where people were opening up brand new ones and then um, we let the other ones that were corks stay in here and they get spoiled and they get gross and then you're wasting wine. So And money. And money. And if you don't have a packet of all our wines by the bottle, just come see us and we'll give you that. As well as I think in your blue folder you got a packet of like the food abbreviations mm -hmm. and terms Food. that you have to know. And those of you um, will hand out dinner opening and closing duties so you guys can study it. And then anyone that didn't get morning ones yesterday will hand those out for you as well. This is our floor chart right here. So this is what the house is going to be working on when she gets in. Um, so, huh? Yeah, no, so I'm gonna, I'll set it down on the table and I recommend everyone to take a picture of it. Uh, so it has all the ta table numbers here for the dining room, for the patios, and for the lounge area. So I'll leave this here um, and then just take a picture of that before we leave. Perfect. Uh, table numbers real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go over <laughs> these guys over here. So obviously uh, we have some work to be done over here. There's a big ladder there for some reason. Um, but it's gonna be 50 up against the uh, windows, 40s and then 30s, right? And then obviously as you come this way, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, and then same thing for the 40s, up to 44, 43, 30s as well. I mean, it's on the floor chart, so you can go ahead and study that. Uh, 60s again, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. And then same thing for the 70s. We start with that one that we were talking about earlier, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. Right? Table numbers, uh, or seat numbers real quick. Uh, for those who haven't been to the trainings, uh, everything, we wanna make sure that we see uh, whatever's north, so like where Chandler's sitting, is I'd say is like the most north seat, which is towards the peaks, like towards the light, kind of like with your sugar, uh, sugar caddies and salt. Uh, so to the right of that is gonna be seat one. So I would say you're north, so then seat one would be here, seat two, seat three, seat four. And then for this table over here, 
your north, so seat one is here, two, three, four, five, six, and then for the four tops of the diamonds, north is here, so seat one would be here, seat two, seat three, seat four, for these high tops over here, that head of the table is north, so seat one is right there, one, two, three, four, five, for this guy over here, where's seat one? No, where? <laughs> this one? Yeah. yeah, cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Super easy. Uh, if you have any questions though, just ask somebody. It's super important that everyone has the same understanding of what seat one. It's like for food runners, someone's like, oh, it's bad for seat one. And they're, like, they're helping you drop your food. It's seat four. And then, I think the best way to put it is we don't auction off any items, right? When items ordered, we're expected to regardless of where the ones we put in the computer or someone else put in the computer to know where that's going, right? So if I put something in, I'm super busy in my section, Herman goes and sees these two drinks at the bar that need to be served, he wants to make sure that those are going to be the correct seat so he can walk over and say, hey, miss for C1, here's a martini. So what's optioning food? Yeah, it's usually good to admit, but uh, this filet of salmon, right? You don't want to do that. You want to know exactly where it's going. Seat numbers are very important. Super important, yeah. And then that's it's important when you're ringing it in, you can put all the seat numbers and make sure. So always focus on seat numbers and your coursing. Make sure everything's. You always want to double check. Make sure everything's ready, good to go, perfect, so that you we don't mess up like that during service. And also, when you're come to splitting chits and you can split by even seat numbers, it will be so much faster if all your seat numbers are correct because it'll just split everything in one, two, boom, done, beautiful. Uh, now I'm going to touch on complaints and resolutions if someone is complaining about their food or something's wrong, how to handle it. Uh, so we like to use the three A's. So apologize, knowledge, and action. So if someone says, hey, this is, uh, I ordered meat in there, this is well done. So if you're going to apologize, oh, I'm very sorry about that. And then acknowledge, you're right, that does look well done, right? Because if you agree with them, then they feel a little better, right? You're on their side. And then action. So what do you do? Um, oh, um, I'll go ahead and get that fixed for you. Can I bring a cup of soup in the meantime so that you have something to eat? Or if they have a burger, then take the burger, leave the french fries so they have something to nibble on. If they have like a side, um, leave the sides there so that they can nibble on something. And then just take like the main. Uh, thing out of the way or get it fixed and then go ahead. Do you give them like that soup for free if that does happen or do you um, charge them for it? Ask your manager. I would because to make them feel a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and Just don't let Eddie know but that's an understanding for all of us that is unspoken that I am fine with you giving away a free cup of soup. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah that, that's how you'll handle that. Go ahead. Uh, as you mentioned like leaving say like a side of fries and leaving the burger. I mean, we'll see obviously how everything's plated if we haven't already, um, but does it come out typically on separate plates so we can take one and leave something else or is it all So usually? if you had like a filet with the sides in there, I'd take the whole plate and then put the sides on a separate plate um, or have the chefs like give them fresh sides and then bring that out right away, mm -hmm. uh, right? Um, so yeah, apologize, acknowledge, action, right? And usually when, when we bring out the refire, um, entree, usually have Haley or myself bring it out. That way it's like, you know, we're really trying to like piss up to them. Yeah, say, or Mark. Mark will always do that for you guys yeah. too. He's always on the floor during dinner as well. And Mark, he's super willing to run out refired items or to do wine service. He loves doing wine service because that's his life. Mm -hmm. so Literally. Like, hey, Mark, I'm kind of in the weeds. Can you do wine service? We'll take a 51. Oh yeah, sure. And then he'll... He won't have a wine key on him, so he'll be like, give me your wine key. Yep. Give me, grab me a, a serviette. Uh, do they have wine glasses? Cool. Usually I like to make sure that everything's ready to go, because he's going to ask you, like, do they have wine glasses? Do they have this, 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 and that? And then you're going to want to say, yeah, everything's ready. Just go over there and talk to them for a little bit. Keep them busy, and then you can go ahead and focus on, on other stuff, right? Any questions on the three A's? We'll practice it during our little mock service. We're going to give you, like, a little complaint. We'll just give you the opportunity to practice that. Right. Do you want to go over making a wine bucket for 
for a white line to do the network in your stream. Sure. Do you want to set one of those up? And then we're just going to... Okay. Okay, I did just want to show anyone that wasn't here yesterday. So this is a wine bucket if you do white wine service. Um, so this is the stands, we find the stands. Um, they're gonna be in the kitchen by where we keep the- um, High chairs. High chairs and the booster seats. So um, you're gonna have this. This is just gonna be a serviette. I like to fold it long ways. So um, if you look at like a serviette, like when we teach you how to fold them later, or we did do it in the first module, I'm sorry. Um, we fold it kind of like hamburger style, I think, but um, I like to do it hot dog because of these little, um, these like little loops, I guess. I just hold it through. That way when you put the bottle in, when you take it out, you can wipe it with that serviette. Um, but uh, I put one third of ice to two thirds of cold water. That is so that it stays cold, but also there's room for the bottle to slip in. That way it's fully emerged, stays cold the whole time. Um, and then this is going to be a wine station that we set up. Um, I like to keep them kind of staggered around the patio. Um, one here is good, like against a pillar, maybe one over there. Um, basically, like not in the way where it's like if people are trying to serve food, they're gonna trip over this. Um, but what it is, is underneath, it's, so this is a tray jack underneath it, black linen, and then one of our um, big oval trays. And so, I'm gonna flip this around so you can see it. The black linen that will, where you find them um, outside, kind of where we keep other, um, like the serviette rags and everything. But what I do is I just like put the black linen over and I tie a little thing at the bottom. Um, normally it's the side that's facing the member. So what we wanna see is that we don't wanna see any of the tray jack at all. So it just looks very nice, very presentable. Um, if there's anything like this, kind of tuck it in, just make it look nice. Um, I like to put three serviettes on here just in case, in case you need Mark or someone else to do wine service for you. They have a bunch of serviettes. One gets dirty, you take that away, you still got two more. Um, if you know that uh, the person coming in is gonna get wine for sure, this is like a just in case. It's like a fail safe, that way you don't have to, um, build it. This is more for tables where it's like maybe like this. It's awkward to put the wine here and do the service. They have appetizers everywhere. Very convenient to have this on the side and it also looks really nice. Um, but yeah, if you do know a table's coming in, they're VIP or they have a wine locker, they always get wine. Um, it's good to set up a decanter, um, maybe a few wine glasses as well if you're going to be on the patio because in the dining room we always have the glasses on there. But yeah, these are the setups for that. So when we do our pre-shift, that's when we'll notate like, hey, they're probably gonna bring in their own bottle. Hey, that's someone that drinks wine pretty much every time they come in. So then we'll do that depending on where they are in the dining room or on the patio. Um, cool, uh, upselling dessert real quick. We have some uh, super bougie desserts that we serve here uh, that our pastry chef Alfonso makes. He's super creative. Um, so, <laughs> I like to use my hands when I talk about dessert, and then that usually does it. But obviously, like keywords that you don't really hear that often, like I don't know, like a raspberry coulis or like a Swiss meringue, whatever you know, or stuff like that. Or even all of them. That just means a scoop of ice cream on top. Yeah, <laughs> they like that. You know? It's all of them. Right. So you can say like, uh, okay, we have. Um, so we have oh, actually, we and we have like our our desserts set up over here. Um, which is where all those risers were at. I'll show you guys after this. On um, display. On display. So when they come in for their dinner reservation, like we usually try to walk them by that so they can see it or just the hostess will mention it. Like, oh, those are desserts if you want to take a quick look. And that way they're already thinking about it. You plant the seed and they're thinking about it. They're going to save a little room, mm -hmm. right? And then that way just selling dessert is like super easy. You just have to mention it and describe it. Like we have our vanilla bean panna cotta. Uh, with uh, diced kiwis and then mango coulis on top. Oh, it's so good. It's my favorite dessert. And just like, you know, just be passionate. Yeah, about that. just nice, refreshing. If it's a chocolate lover, just really milk them, smooth, smooth them. We have our pavlova, which is uh, <laughs> meringue, right? Vanilla meringue, and it comes with four different coulis uh, blueberry, strawberry, raspberry, and mango, right? And it's so good. And you can kind of like, uh, Chef Alfonso will give you like a backstory on why he makes these desserts. Yeah, so, that, one's, that one took like a six second Google search and we found out <laughs> that pavlova is an Australian dessert that was named after a Russian like ballerina or something like that. 
the members love that, right? It yeah. took six seconds, it was the first thing that top, popped up on Google. Cool, what is a pop logo? Well, this is how it's made, this is where it came from, and they love that. It'll just sell the whole dish for mm -hmm. them. And it makes you, sorry, it makes you look really good and knowledgeable at what you're selling. Yeah. They're just gonna eat it up and be like, yes, please, I'll take three. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't used dessert menus since 2019 because of COVID, but I think it's better like, if they say, yeah, um, oh yeah, bring a dessert menu, and then you just say, <laughs> it makes you look so good, yeah. and we have them on display so people can be like, oh my god, that looks mm -hmm. so good, I want that. So we'll have like deciding between two, don't be afraid to walk over to the display and grab them and bring them over. Yeah, and show them. Displays, but or them take pictures on your phone and you can pull out your phone and show them like, hey, these are the really great dessert out of the four. I'm not going to lie, this one's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I recommend that one, but mm -hmm. all four are delicious as well. How often are menu items like that changing? Desserts every are, are probably, probably like uh, every month. Desserts? But, yeah, if we have like... Con there's like going to be three constant ones that are pretty much always there and then you'll come up with like two or three new ones for like the weekend. Or the weekend. Mm -hmm. It's not like super difficult to like get them memorized because if we don't switch out like all of them at once, it'll be like we'll take one out and then replace it. Um, but we like to make sure that we have like gluten-free stuff, mm -hmm. uh, vegan, like vegan yeah. chocolate cakes and stuff. Oh, that was there was like a vegan gluten-free chocolate cake that we made last year that you literally couldn't even tell that it wasn't like you were eating a bunch of carbs and calories and stuff. It was crazy, so good. So if you, if you say like, oh, we have a vegan chocolate cake and then you have that, that one older guy who's like, ah, I want extra gluten in mine, I want extra <laughs> this stuff. And then you can just say like, honestly, I tried both of them and this one's better than this. Oh yeah, that's literally the easiest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a chocolate lover myself, and trust me, I never eat anything gluten-free, but this is delicious. <laughs> um, specials will definitely rotate more often, uh, depending on you know how much we can sell. So if we sell out for the night, it's obviously going to change for tomorrow. Um, if we have oysters for two nights in a row, we'll keep it the same, maybe change the mignonette up a little bit. But uh, specials, I think, will rotate way more frequently than desserts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's just one. Yeah, it's just one written on the whiteboard, easy peasy dinner. We'll go in a little bit. We'll probably be three to four specials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll be doing yeah. But I was going to say, like, we do have um, team meal at 4 p.m. So um, all the dinner staff will come in and we go over, like, reservations, but we also go over all the specials. We kind of quiz each other, too, to make sure that everyone's ready. Like, we know what, you know, this side is, what it means. And all that stuff so we do go over that we tell you you know what the specials are to make sure you're prepared like we're not going to switch anything up on you where it's going to be like oh like i have to memorize this in 10 minutes like you know you're like blindsided no like we go over it um and you know we're going to try to make sure that like if the chef's going to change anything drastic that like they let Haley know or mark know we'll email it yep and stuff like that and usually so. the chef will come into our pre-shift meeting and he'll actually go into detail what the dish is which helps a lot because you can sell it like that. Usually we'll get the chance to try it, but if we don't, we have the chef's descriptive vocabulary to use, and that gives us the chance to ask him all these questions. Well, what's that spice? What is it from? Like, where? What does it taste like? Where is it from? What's the kind of origin of this dish, etc.? So that, that gives mean? us a huge opportunity to become highly educated on the dish. Um, and then also, last season we were most of the time emailed those specials, like, you know, on the Thursday or the Friday. So you do have, you know, Take advantage of that. You have the time to memorize it before you even come into your shift. Um, so there's not really an excuse to not have it memorized, yeah. to be honest. Not only I, not only all of us will quiz you, our chef will call you out directly mm -hmm. and will basically make you do your spiel. And it's very, very important to him, and I will agree because he puts his heart and soul, as does the rest of the staff, to make this and take the extra time to come up with these fantastic dishes. So we should go the extra mile and sell it for them, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to scare you with that, it's just super important, you know, that we know what we're selling, mm -hmm. you know, so if he gets upset, like, we don't know it, then, you know. Yeah. Feel more confident yeah. Table too. That and, you know, we don't want to be reading going up to a table and our fish of the moment is blah 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 like you want to look at them you want to engage you want to look at everyone's eyes and really sell it use your hands use that vocabulary i don't want to watch people reading from their book i want you guys to really know this 
because it makes you look really good and it does build up your confidence. It's not like crazy difficult either, right? Like we'll memorize six desserts, our fish of the moment, our special entree, uh, prime ribs, the, the ounces and the prices, uh, oysters and the sashimi that we're going to be doing and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, like each entree has its own description, but as long as like you go over the four or five, like you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And I like to write it down. So like we'll give you a little pre-ship with all the descriptions and everything that we're doing for that night, but I'll still write it down on my server book just so I can remember it. Um, and then if I do have to look down, then it's right there. But yeah, that's during, I don't know if we went over every Friday, we will do a prime rib special on top of the cool downs, but that will be a verbal special. Yeah. Any questions? <coughs> cool. Uh, uh, all your, your chits with the uh, gratuities and the signatures and the member numbers, and then you're just going to staple that or paper clip it to your end shift report. The end shift report just has your total sales that you did for the night, all the gratuities that you made, how many covers you served. It's just kind of like an overview of the night. And you'll staple that or paper clip it to all your receipts, and then we'll put that um, in the haberdashery or the lounge server station. There's a little basket under there. That's where we all put all the bartenders, lunch servers, dinner servers. We all put that in there. Very comment cards. Hmm? Comment cards. Comment cards are going to be found. Yeah. In Oh, what, what do we do with them? Good, yeah. Um, so Haley doesn't like it when we staple them. Uh, so with common cards, you can just toss them in there. They don't have to be like attached or anything uh, to your end shift report. Because I like to go over them, and you know, if we really great so have some really good ones, I'll bring them to meeting and we'll go over it. And you know, that person did above and beyond. Look at what the CTME they did, or something like that. That family dinner pre shift is super important. We're gonna go over reservations. All of us can be like, oh, Mr. Scott likes doors on the rocks and that's his preference stuff like that it's such it's really really important we can get all of our questions all our nerves out we'll do a pep talk it's our go for the night i was gonna say something else but i don't remember and on that common card it has obviously like like a one through five on how is your service how is your food and overall experience and then there's also a section that says did the server use your name and they can put yes or no so that's why we want to at least say their name three times um, and that just like makes them feel nice, right? You tell them like, hi, Mrs. Edwards, how are you doing? Like, oh, this guy knows you. Mm -hmm. And then you say it again, and then at the end when you drop it to you, here you go, Mrs. Edwards, here's a pleasure to your server. We look forward to the next time. And then, <coughs> obviously, if they hear that, they'll put yes, and that's what we like to see as well. Mm -hmm. If you do have a bad comment card, please don't throw it away. It's nothing against you. I just want to go over and see it. And then maybe I'll pull you aside and be like, hey, what happened? Why do you think you have got this comment card? And same for member disputes. I will personally go to you, not saying that you're in trouble, but I'm going to let you know, hey, I got this member dispute. You didn't check your signatures with the member number you put in. Just make sure you know that for next time because it'll kind of stick with you. And if I have like more than three member disputes within like a couple weeks, we got maybe a little bit of a problem that we're not doing our due diligence, right? So very important to always print every single receipt that you have to put at your end shift report, regardless if they signed it or not. And if they didn't sign it, we'll write DNS at the bottom with your initials. So when, if I do have to do a dispute, I can do the investigation. And sometimes it'll be not like a negative on like your service, but on the food. So if they put like a three for food, then we want to go back and make sure like, oh, what did they order? What was wrong with it? Talk to the chefs. Exactly. 